Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I am dropping my daughter off at the airport. She is headed to Florida for spring break week. And I wrote a two page list of instructions <laughs> of things for her not to do. Uh, because one thing I have vowed in my parenting journey with my children is that they will never say that I didn't tell them something. That is one of the things that I said quite a bit with my parents. There were a lot of things my parents did not tell me, did not share, a lot of mistakes they made. They never told me that, never shared it with me as a cautionary tale, um, never had a sex talk from my mom, uh, never had like, no, no money talk. Like a lot of lessons that I learned in life, I learned the hard way. And I just said to myself, I would not allow my children to have that same fate, that I was going to share my knowledge and wisdom. I am incredibly transparent with my children. So I said, I'm going to share my knowledge and wisdom. And, you know, they may take some of that. They may not. But I can sleep at night knowing that I shared it. So that's the main thing that's important to me is that I can rest well knowing that I did, you know, share all of my knowledge and wisdom with them. So... Thank you, I found your page, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. So today's short talk, <laughs> and it's not gonna be that short because <laughs> I got a 20 minute ride back home, is all about a woman should not want to compete with a man, okay? And ladies, one of the things I find you all falling prey to, because men, men have notoriously been known for this forever, okay, since the beginning of time, men have notoriously been uh, ego-driven. Very, very ego-driven, right? Men, I mean, think of some of the greatest leaders in our world in our time that were men and how big their ego were, their ego was. And now I find women falling prey to this. Women are less down to earth, they're less humble, they're less, um, you know, they, they have huge egos. I don't know what's happening. Like, how did we get here? This this ego, maniacal way of being because that normally is not us. That is normally not us as women. We're normally the more humble, the more, um, the less prideful. Men are known for that. And it's like, we have gotten on this masculine field where we wanna compete with men and, and we're becoming more like them. That's not good. That's not good. <laughs> That's not good. We're not men. And I think that a lot of people, you know, they think that this is weird of me to say, but it's the truth. I think that a lot of these female issues we're having, a lot of this infertility, a lot of cancers, a lot of female issues that we have is because energetically we're all wrong. We are not embracing our feminine selves and our feminine side. And it's almost like, it sends a message to the body, I don't wanna be a woman, right? I don't wanna be a woman. Take these breasts off, take this uterus out. Don't have no babies, think about that. So this is the subconscious message that we're sending to our body when we want to be men and compete with men and work as hard as men and do what men do. And you know, we have a big ego and you know, we're sending the message that it's not okay to be a woman. And that's not cool. And, and I think our body is like turning against us. I think our very body is starting to like turn against us because it's saying, oh, okay, you don't like being a woman. I'll take your uterus. I won't allow you to have any babies. I'll make you have all kinds of female problems. I'll take your ovaries. You know, I'll take your breasts. That's, that's in essence is, is what you're saying. So please, we gotta lay down these masculine ways. We gotta lay down this masculine stick. There must be balance, okay? One of the things that, I, that we don't talk about enough is how we balance both of the energies. We need to learn how to balance the masculine and feminine energy. We don't talk about that enough. So my goal is not to remove all of your masculine energy because we have both. Men and women have feminine energy and masculine energy. So think about uh, artists like Prince. Prince, one of the greatest artists of our time, one of the greatest musicians of our time. 
he was a blend of masculine and feminine energy. And he made it work. <laughs> like, he made it work. Nobody questioned his, nobody questioned his sexuality. <laughs> I kid y'all not. Like, to this day, it, it shocks me. Like, okay, nobody questioned whether this dude was gay. Like, nobody. No, he made it work. He was a man. He had the creativity. He had, like, he made it work. And to me, he's a perfect example of integrating both energies because he had a very creative side, a very sensual side, um, and he was also, also very masculine. He had some of the most beautiful women in the world he was married to and, and they were their lover. So he made it work because plenty of times where I was questioning, like, what's going on here? But he is a good example of integrating the masculine and the feminine. It is possible. And I have to think of, I'm trying to think of a female version of that. <coughs> a woman who's learned how to do that. So a woman who's learned how to integrate both of those energies and still very much, you know, be soft and sweet. And remember, this month, it's on the 31st, so March 31st. I'm actually going to put out a post today letting you know when the next master class is. It will be Sunday, March 31st at 7.30 p.m. We will have another master class. It's all about dark feminine versus light feminine energy. We will talk about those two energies. We'll talk about integrating the masculine and the feminine energy. And I will give a presentation on that so ladies, you can learn how to have both because that is the goal the goal is not you know you all are looking at all this stuff online and talking about soft life and soft air and you don't want to do nothing and this and that no that's not healthy that's not healthy if you have children you have to be in your masculine energy you have to give direction and guidance all of those things are masculine so you're not going to be you know soft and sweet and just let your kids run all over you no you have to have a little you have to have a little strength in there. And we also use masculine energy to run our business. Like we need it. We need it. I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. I would be, you know, like, oh, I just go to a job and come home and, you know. But no, if you're going to own a business, if you're going to get anywhere in the space of business, you have to be willing to use your masculine energy or your dark feminine energy, one or the other. So we're going to talk about that this month on March 31st at 7.30. Uh, we will be doing another master class. And if you missed the last master class in February, you can go to the link in my bio and you can purchase it. You can purchase the replay and the feminine communication master class workbook. So that's all together. It is in the link in my bio if you're curious about feminine communication. Okay. But back to the topic of the ladies who, like I said, they're, they're really struggling. Um, they're feeling overwhelmed. They're feeling frustrated. You know, it's because you're operating out, you're way too far over in your masculine. You're operating far outside of your natural uh, energy, which is feminine. And so you've got to find ways every single day. So every single day, I reach for things to feed that feminine energy. I'm reaching for things to make me feel good. So feminine energy is all about feeling good. It's all about, um, you know, just being creative. It's about being receptive. You gotta find ways in which to do that, okay? So that is why, in my opinion, we have some of the issues that we have, especially as women. We're having female troubles. Um, we're having troubles conceiving. We're just having all kinds of problems. And it's because we are too far over in our masculine. And we have to be willing to bring the needle back. We have to learn how to integrate both of those energies and, um, you know, just bring that needle back. Okay? But no, you should not want to compete with men. You should not feel strange. So here's a huge one. So many women tell me that, Allowing a man to pay the bill for a date, allowing a man um, to give them things and to do things for them, allowing, oh, if, 
if, if she wants to stay at home, I said, okay, and you're gonna allow a man to take care of you financially. They have such a problem with that. And they're very quick to remind the man that they're educated or that I have my own money, I can make money. All of that is ego driven. It's like the, the farther over you get in that masculine energy, the more you become like men and not in a good way. Not in a good way. That's the part of feminism that is so frustrating to me. So women are, and I think it, it can even be frustrating to men because men are saying, okay, it's one thing for you to be more like men in terms of being hardworking and, you know, not being led by your emotions and, um, you know, putting your head down and getting things done and all of those things. But no, you all are not taking the great qualities of men. You all are taking the poor qualities of men. You're taking the, oh, I want to be able to sleep around and oh, you know, I'm empowered to wear whatever I want and have sex with whoever I want and make a bunch of money. And it's like, mm, like you're, you are, you're copying men, but not the best part of men. That's not good. That is absolutely not good. So think about all of men's good qualities. If you're going to copy men, but you're, most of the feminist women are not even copying the good parts of men. You're copying the degenerate parts of men, the lowly parts of men, the men who have no character and no morals. That's what you choose to emulate. So not good, absolutely not good. I want to see us, and, and you know, at the end of the day, I don't wanna see us emulating men at all. Like I want us to learn about dark and light feminine. I want us to operate in those energies most of the time. And I want you to sprinkle, sprinkle a little masculine energy in here and there in relationship to business, in relationship to how you run your household or your family. Yeah, you can do that. But 90, 95% 90, of the time, if you are in a relationship with a man, you should be in your feminine, okay? I would say 90% of the time. If your man gets sick, if he gets hurt, if he gets injured, and he's not able to do the things he normally does, then you can scale it back to like 60%. 50%, you know, you can kind of pick up a little more, a little more. So it's not to say that you're not capable. I am 100% capable of jumping into my masculine energy. I don't want to. Like, I don't want to. And even if my man got sick or hurt or injured, my hope is it would be temporary. Like, I have to step up in our household. I have to do things that normally he would do. But my hope is that it's temporary. It's not a good state for you to live in you know, all the time. That's just not good. And like I said, all you're going to do is pick up the negative masculine traits. So the ego, that's what a lot of women, they are deep in their ego. Um, the degenerate, you know, immoral qualities, uh, you, those are the traits y'all are picking up. Not the good, not the good stuff. You're, you're picking up the yucky stuff. So that's why I say 90 to 95%. If you're in a relationship with a man, if you're married, you should be the girl. You should be the girl in that relationship. Now, when you go to work, that's a different story. When you're dealing with your kids, that's a different story. But when your man comes around you, you are the girl and he feels it. He feels it. He knows he has to step up. He knows he has to lead because you're not gonna. <laughs> like, you're not gonna. Like, I'm not gonna lead. I'm not gonna. Nothing will get done, okay? If you're my man, and you're in your feminine energy, nothing is gonna get done. But you're not gonna be my man if you ain't if you in your feminine energy. So that don't matter. But nothing's gonna get done. And you're gonna get frustrated, and I'm gonna get frustrated, and I'm gonna say, hey, what's going on? Oh, I don't know what's going on. No, don't look to me. I'm the girl. I wanna be the girl. And I want to be led in a healthy way. So yeah, nothing's going to get done. That's what happens when two feminine energy people come together. Is not much of anything gets done. And because that's frustrating to a woman, that's what makes her say, okay, fine, let me just do it. Let me just jump into that energy. Let me make things happen. And then that's when all hell, you know, all of it goes south. All hell breaks loose because the man now goes even deeper into the feminine. He's like, yeah, you're doing everything. You're making all the plans. You're paying all the bills. You're doing this. You're doing that. I'm going to go even deeper into the feminine part of myself. Yeah, because at that point, he's like, great, somebody picked up the stick. 
And instead of picking up the masculine stick, you need to put down the feminine man. Okay, that's, that's what you need to do. Okay, I'm not picking up no masculine stick. I'm going to put down the feminine man. I'm going to drop about 200 pounds, 190 pounds of dead weight. And think about it like this. And this is where a lot of men, they get testy. They feel very testy about, oh, y'all are, you know, leaving your marriages and leaving your husbands to do it on your own. Okay, but you need to understand this. They don't realize how bad it feels, how horrible it feels to be sitting next to a whole biological male and to have to do everything. That is a totally different feeling to do everything and there's no biological male. <laughs> like, that's, a, that's a totally different feeling. That's a feeling of, okay, I've got to make it happen. Okay, I'm responsible for me. Like, it does not make me feel, you know, horribly despondent. It's just, it just is. I'm like, oh, okay, I've got to, you know, go out to work and come home and do this and do that. Yeah, I, it, it feels very practical. That, that's it. But to have a whole biological male in the home or sitting next to you and you're doing, all, it, it, no, it is a horrible feeling. It is a horrible, it makes you feel less than a woman. It is an absolute horrible feeling. You start feeling unworthy. You start feeling unlovable. You start feeling undesired, unwanted. You're thinking in your head, you know, am I not a woman? What is happening here? Why doesn't this man want to take care of me and step up for me? Why doesn't he want to protect me and provide for me? Like, it, it's a horrible feeling. Like, I can't even describe it. And yet, men, can, they don't get it. Yeah, I don't understand. Why can't you just stay in the marriage if you're going to do it? Because it feels horrible. It feels absolutely awful. That's why. Me doing it, like, I'm not married. I'm not married. I'm not, I'm not in a relationship. Me managing my business, <coughs> me going to work, me coming home, me managing things at home or cleaning up and, and cooking and all, that does not feel as awful as it would feel knowing there's a man, a biological male in my house. That's a whole next level feeling. That's a horrible feeling. Right now, it just feels practical. It just feels like, oh yeah, I've got to, I've got to make things happen. I've got to put some things in place. I've got to do this, you know? Okay. Yeah. I, I told, I tell every woman this, when you know there's no man at home in your bed at night, you're like, okay, again, it's very practical. There's nothing sad about it. There's nothing lonely about it. It just is. Okay. There's no man. I'm not going home to any man in my bed tonight. Um, and that's just, it just is. It just is. But imagine if I knew there was a man at home, right? If I knew I was in a relationship, I knew I had a man, I had a partner, and now I'm questioning whether he's coming home. I'm questioning where he is. I'm questioning why I haven't seen him in days and weeks. That's a different feeling. That's a totally different feeling. And so me, as they say, choose your heart, I'm going to take the first, okay? I'm going to take the, no, there's no man at home in my bed. There's no man coming. There's no man, you know, no. I'd rather choose that than the second part of, I'm supposed to be in this relationship. I, supposedly I'm partnered. Supposedly I'm married. And yet, I don't know where my husband is. I don't know where he is. I don't know who he's with. You know, it's two o'clock in the morning. I'm laying in the bed all this time by myself. No, I do not choose that. I do not choose it and do not want it. I will much rather take the first because there's a certainty in that. There's a certainty. There's... um. There's just a, a calm peace. There's a knowing. It helps to support my self-esteem. The second part destroys my self-esteem. The second one, it destroys my self-worth. It has me questioning everything. But the first one, I'm like, yeah, this is just what it is. You know, What is there to question? This is just what it is. This is what it is right now, right? I always say that. Yeah, this is my situation right now. Like, that's, that's what you say. But no, no, this idea that, you know, I have to work this hard and have a biological male and, and I have to do everything. And, and then look, it never end there. It never end there, y'all, with, oh, I have to work hard and do everything. You know what it also means? He want to be taken care of. 
it's like an extra burden on your plate. He want, he wants something. He want to be taken care of. He want to be cooked for. He want to be cleaned for. He want to be sexed. So let me get this straight. Okay, I have to do everything men do and everything women are supposed to do. I got to do both of them all the time, every day. <laughs> no, that's a horrible feeling. That's a horrible feeling. Like, no, right now, like I said, I ain't getting none. <laughs> like, and it is what it is. I ain't getting none. I know that. I'm not out in these streets. I'm not getting none. I'm not giving nobody none. None is being had. Okay? And I know that. And again, okay, it's just practical. It's just a fact. It's nothing to feel a way about. I don't feel like, oh my God, I need, no, I don't feel that way. It just is. It just is. Now, it will be a different story. And this is what the men tell me. It would be a different story if I was laying next to a man every night or I had a man in my home and I wasn't getting none. Now I'm really questioning like everything. I'm questioning my whole world, my whole life. This is not how it's supposed to be. <laughs> like I have a man and I'm not getting none. Like what is happening? I'm married and we're not sleeping together. Like that's that's the correlation I want to make for the men that might be listening to this. Yes, imagine. You're in, a, and some of y'all know this fact. Some of y'all know this reality because you have written to me about how you have gone years without having sex in your marriage. It's a horrible thing, isn't it? It makes you feel horrible, doesn't it? It lowers your self esteem. It lowers your, what you believe is your self worth. It makes you feel like there's something wrong with you. Like, is it me? Is it me? What's happening? Why can't I, why doesn't this person want me this way? Why can't I, you know, be, be intimate with this person that claims to love me, claims to, like, it's, it's mind boggling. But that is how women feel when we're put in a position of doing everything in the house and making all the plans and leading the family and dealing with the kids and taking care of you and reminding you of your appointments, reminding you of your mother's birthday and reminding you of this and doing this and doing that, cooking, cleaning, having sex with you and doing this and doing that and setting up. The, that's how we feel. So now we're on the same page. That's how we feel. Neither one of us should feel that way. A man should be having sexual intimacy with his wife and fairly regularly, a woman should have a man that's willing to, to do his part and then some for his family. Like, no, it shouldn't be that way on either side of the coin. Okay? He needs to step up. He's got to do his part. She got to do her part. It shouldn't be that way. But see, this is what a lot of men don't understand. Women who are not predominantly in their feminine who do not respect you who do not admire you trust you like you they not gonna want to sleep with you they they not gonna want to sleep with you nothing about that screams oh my gosh i want to rip his clothes off no if she's leading if she's doing everything if she's taking care of everything the last thing she wants to do is have sex with you so what i'm teaching the ladies it does benefit you it benefits them and it benefits you like I said, if my man needs me to be physically intimate, I need to be predominantly in my feminine. Y'all, this big truck is going by. Forgive me. So, to me, all right, I don't know what's going on out here in the world, but it's traffic. But to me, um, that makes sense. Like, I don't know why I have to convince people of that. I really don't. I don't I don't know why people need convincing of that biological fact. Like that's how it works. Women must be 90 to 95% in their feminine energy, okay? In order for them to be in their body. And remember that. Sex and sexuality for us, we have to get out of our head and we have to be in our body state. If we are up here in our head, right? If we're overthinking, if we're being mistreated and we're thinking about that and then that's getting us all emotionally riled up, yeah, we're not going to want to sleep with you. That's it. It's not it's not a hard equation. But let us be in our feminine. Let us be cool, calm, collected. Let us be creative and flowing. Let us be soft and sweet and all of the things 
yes, we're more likely to respond to you sexually. And especially if you are leading, you're leading in multiple areas, we're more likely to respond to you in a good way. So ladies, like I really need you to rethink this. If you are single, so here's what, I, I, this is the question I get asked the most. So I'm single, I'm either a single mother or I'm just a single woman. And I have to do everything. And I say, okay, and I get it. It's a lot of us. However, I need you to make moments in every single day where you are activating that feminine side of yourself. A lot of you are just turning, turning it off. You're just turning it off and you're in your masculine 90 to 95% of the time. That's not good. It's going to lead to all kinds of health issues. It's going to lead to all kinds of mental health issues. You have to reach for that feminine energy every single day. So every single day, I'm lighting my candles every single day. You know, I'm bathing, I'm rubbing lotion on my body, I'm listening to music, I'm dancing, you know, I'm playing with my pets, I'm nurturing my pets, I'm, you know, doing things with my kids, I'm cooking, I am using my creativity and my creative skills, you know, these are all the things that put me in that energy. And I'm reaching for that every day, every day, you need to reach for that feminine energy, every single day. But women are going days upon weeks or, oh, I don't do any self-care or maybe they get their hair done. Maybe they get their nails done, you know, but really that's just not enough. That's just not enough. You're going to have to really uh, look at those feminine hobbies, look at the list of feminine things that you could be doing and you've got to try to activate it every single day, every single day. Okay. Because if you don't, you get stuck. A lot of you are stuck in that masculine space. You're stuck in that energy. And once, and see, here's the thing. So this is what I personally believe. I've gotten a lot of pushback, but this is what I believe. So women who are predominantly in their masculine energy, number one, they don't attract good men. They don't attract masculine men. Men can see it and energetically feel it and smell it and taste it a mile away. So you're not attracting masculine men. You're attracting a lot of feminine men. You're attracting a lot of men who want you to take care of them and want you to mommy them. And they love a boss chick. I love a chick getting a bag. See, because they want you to take care of them. So no, no, no. So you got that going on. And then two, if by chance a good man kind of ekes through, he kind of squeaks through and is like, you know what? I see some feminine in there. And he comes your way, you will ruin it. You will ruin it with your masculine ways. You will turn him off. You will ruin it. You won't be in receptive energy. You won't be in sexy, sensual energy. You won't be in sweet, soft energy. You, you'll, it, you'll ruin it. And I've seen it happen too many times. Too many times where a woman will, you know, a good guy will come along, a man who's like, yeah, I wanna, you know, I wanna be with you. He's physically attracted. And her masculine ways just turns him clean off. And the relationship is over and I'm like, mm. <laughs> like that's what, see, you're stuck. You're stuck in that energy. And you've got to find ways regularly to come out of that energy. Okay, so that should be a daily thing. Heck, I, there's, out, there's times where it's an hourly thing. Every hour I'm thinking to myself, what can I do right now that will put me in my feminine energy? What can I do right now to make myself feel good? What can I do right now to just ooh, exhale, right? Those are the things that I'm looking for each and every single day. And so I'm going to encourage you all to do that too. You have to make a habit of it when you come off of work. Sometimes I even encourage women to do it at work. Like even at work, find the, the dark feminine energy that you can use for this, for this task, for this delegation or whatever. Don't solely be in your masculine energy because you get stuck. You get stuck and you, and guess what? Women who are stuck, they cannot be led. They cannot submit. They cannot receive. They cannot collaborate. They're in competition mode. They cannot do any of the feminine things, but yet, you know, and then, they, oh my God. And this get, this irritates me to no end. They get on social media. I don't know why I'm single because I got this and I got that and I have this education and I make this money and I got, yeah, I'm just like, you don't get it. 
You don't like this video is why you're single. You don't get it. You so don't get it. Okay. This video that you're making is why you're single. Men don't give a fig about that. And when I say that, this I know that women are deeply in their masculine because their ego gets pricked. <gasps> what? I have a law degree. I'm a doctor. I'm a nurse practitioner. What? Why are you saying that, Anita? And I'm thinking, you in your masculine right now. I done pricked that ego right now. I have my own home. I drive this type of car. And I go here and I do this. And I'm thinking, this is this right here, right here. <laughs> this right here is my point. You're making my point. The fact that you're so deeply entrenched in your ego. And remember, our ego is what we what we have and what we do. It's not what we are. That's how you know you're in an ego state of mind. When it's all about what you have and what you do and your title and this and that, you're in your ego. You're entrenched in your ego. When you want the last word, when you need to be right, when you, know, when you need to correct people, when you need to be in control. Ooh, I'm talking to some people right now and y'all know it. If you being honest, you know I'm talking to you. If you need to be control of that, in control of everything, you're in your ego. When you don't trust people, when you can't sit back and relax and trust that other people are not stupid, you're in your ego. You're in your ego. Sorry, I hate to tell you, but sorry, somebody got to tell you. So do the work, do the inner work, okay? And like I said, you can split off between dark and light feminine you can utilize your masculine masculine energy when necessary but mm -mm, mm -mm. a lot of y'all are stuck you are stuck in your masculine ways and that is why you know in my mind you know the, there's an imbalance there's a complete imbalance in the world because women in the process of so-called bringing women up we have brought men down and it was never meant to be that way. It was never meant to be that way. What I wanted to see happen, so if this was my world, yes, I wanted to see women, so if men are here, I wanted to see women come up as well. I wanted us to together say, okay, what works for us? You have the same opportunity as I have, but what works for us? And for some people, the women will stay at home. The women will not work she will have kids and stay at home and take care of her family because that's what works for them and for other people the woman will work maybe they will split their bills or whatever however they do it but yeah that's what I wanted to see happen so having the opportunity available and 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 you know trying to squeeze everybody into one mode like that's not what my intention was that's never what my intention was I always tell people that I, I simply want everybody to have the opportunity. But at the end of the day, no. There are plenty of people that are like, no, I don't, I don't want the opportunity. I don't want to go out here and take some corporate job and make a bunch of money and never see my kids and have daycare raise my kids. I don't want to do that. I think we like the idea of it, but at the end of the day, I, I think we don't want to do that. That's it. So that's what equality means to me. Gender equality in my mind means we all have the opportunity to do what we want to do, whatever that is, regardless of gender and sex, right? But we're not pushing a narrative. We're not pushing this idea that a woman is somehow less than because she's not out there, you know, working her behind off, working 80 hours a week and, you know, is, has all these degrees and, you know, is, is running all these companies. No, no. There will be a select amount of women that want to do that. But I don't want to push that on every woman. I don't want us to make women feel bad because they actually want to be home and raising their children. And I don't want women to feel less than being taken care of by a man. Like, I actually feel more than, like, let a man take care of me. You talk about freeing my soul, a man taking care of me frees my soul, okay? That's how, that's Anita at her best. 
is a man taking care of her. So I don't understand that. But but see, we've sold this narrative that um, the it's somehow the woman's a gold digger. Oh, here we go. If she's being 100% provided for by her man, by her husband, she's a gold digger. That's why women, oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to go out and get a job. I'm going to go out and get a degree, and I'm going to show you. That's not Anita. That's not me. Like, 12 years, I was chilling, okay? And I didn't care who didn't like it. I didn't care what you said. I didn't care what you, oh, Anita's a gold digger. I need, okay, okay, I'm going to be your gold digger. <laughs> like I said, uh, you, you right? You right? That's what Anita was saying. But just know I'm built different. I don't care what y'all say. I don't care what y'all think. Anita's going to do what works for Anita. That's the difference. But I understand it when women say that. That they they feel bad. Oh, I feel bad for not working. I feel bad for not contributing. But in my mind, I'm thinking, how did we get here? Like, how did we get to this place where that is a thing? Because my mom stayed at home when we were little. My mom stayed at home and then she eventually did start working. I think we were like seven or eight. I think we were like in elementary school. And then my mom started her career and she worked for what, 22 years and then she retired. And she retired early. My mom retired at like 47. Okay. So again, she got, again, she got a provider husband. Her last husband was a provider husband. And he was on her about her working. He was on her about them not spending enough time. He was just on her. And he was like, look, you know, you need to, you need to be at home with me. We need to be doing stuff. You know, we need to be going places and doing stuff and let me take care of everything. So my mom, look, my mom did it on the front end with my dad when we were little. She did it on the back end with her third husband. She was like, yep, no problem. <laughs> no problem. He was like, yeah, I need you to retire. My mom was 47. My mom has not worked since she was 47. Now, they have had businesses. They've had businesses together because that was part of it. He wanted to go into, like, you know, real estate. He wanted to go into, like, having rental homes and real estate and all that. They went into business together. But my mom's not worked for somebody. I mean, my mom's 81. And all this time, my mom has not worked for another person because her then husband was like, no, I need you to get out of that job. I need you to come and stay home with me. We're going to do something, you know, for us. We're going to run this business and start this real estate thing. And we're going to do that for us. But most of our time is going to be spent traveling and, and doing things with our church and just spending time together. That's what they did. So my mom, like I said, she don't have no problem with nobody taking care of her. None whatsoever. She worked with the second husband. But by the third husband, baby was like, mm -mm, I'm good. So, you know, that's what I come from. I share that so you know where I'm coming from. Anita don't have no problem letting a man take care of her at all, at all. Like that's that that ain't a thing. You will never hear me say, "Oh, I I feel like I should be doing more. I should." No, I'm gonna do my feminine thing. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> that's the more I'm gonna do is the stuff on the feminine side of the fence. You'll never hear me say, "I should be working ten hours a day with you." I should be working seventy hours a week. You're never gonna hear me say that because it's not that's not a part of my feminine nature is to grind myself into the ground. And just know this, fellas, I, and I need you to hear me, hear me. If you have a woman that's really working hard, and I'm talking, she's doing a tough job during the day, or maybe she's doing a job and then another job at night and on the weekend, you ain't getting none. You ain't getting none. That is the last thing on her mind, is thinking about giving you some. Okay, her mind is full of the job during the day. Her job is tired at night. Her job is her kids. Like all these things is more important than you. Okay, so just understand that for all these men that want boss chicks, y'all want women with their own bag and women that work hard. And yeah, we can come up together. You not getting none. <laughs> so if you willing to sacrifice that, go for it. But you're not getting none, fellas. Sorry. Because that woman is not in her sensual and sexual nature as a feminine woman. Like, maybe if she worked part-time. Maybe if she got a mindless job during the day. But nah, y'all want six-figure women. You want doctors. You want nurse practitioners. You want lawyers. You want, you know, big business real estate women or, you know, entrepreneurs. 
But I'm gonna keep it real. You not getting laid. <laughs> you not. Mm -mm. It's a trade off. Don't ever forget this. My grandfather told me this, and a lot of y'all keep forgetting this. Everything is a trade off. Everything is a trade off. If nobody's ever told you, let me be the first to tell you. Everything in this world is a trade off. So if you got a woman that's fine, if you got a beautiful woman, it's a trade off in there somewhere. Maybe she ain't that bright. Maybe, you know, she craves attention all the time. Maybe men are falling all over themselves in her DMs, out in public. See, it's a trade off to everything. They didn't tell you that. Everything is a trade off. But y'all want it all. You don't want to trade off one for the other. You want it all. I want a fine woman. I want her to be smart. I want her to be a nurse practitioner. I want her to have this and do that and uh, help me with my business. No, baby, it don't work that way. Everything is a trade-off. And I'm so glad that at that time, I was with someone that was like, no, nah, I want a stay-at-home wife. I want a stay-at-home mother. And she's not going to look like a supermodel. She's not going to have the fake nails. She's not going to have the weave and all of that. No, she's going she's gonna to be a natural beauty. That's what he would always say. I'm looking for a natural beauty. I'm looking for a woman to keep herself up, of course, and keep working out and keep taking care of herself. But it's going to be more of a natural beauty. I want to come home to a clean home, a nice smelling home. I want to smell food. When I hit the door, I want my kids to look clean and, and well cared for. I want my kids to be mannerable. Like it's a trade-off, okay? So think about Portia. Think about Portia from Real Housewives, all right? Unless you literally balling out of control, you're not going to look like that and also be Betty Crocker. Like you're not going to look like that and also be getting sex like every single day. Like it's a trade-off, you got to decide what's important for you. What's the most important thing for you? At that time, my husband was like, I want to get some sex. <laughs> I want to get some home cooking. I want to get a, a home created, right? I want a soft place to land when I get home from work. Like those were his priorities. And he set it up that way. He set it up that way. Y'all need to work on doing that, men and women. You need to sincerely prioritize what's most important for you and work it up that way. You need to set it up that way, okay? Because he was like, yeah, I, I don't want you worrying about no reports. I don't want you worrying about no presentations. I don't want you worrying about no job. No, because all of that means I'm not getting laid. I'm not getting a family home-cooked meal. So, gentlemen, hear me well. Ladies, there will be trade-offs. See, let me talk about the ladies. Y'all want somebody fine. Y'all want somebody with a nice body and a thick beard. But, oh, uh, uh, you know, I don't want no women in his DMs. I don't want no women messaging under his posts. I, no, that's the trade-off. Baby boy is fine, okay? And you ain't the only one who thinks so, okay? Baby boy look good. And guess what, though? He, he may not have no degree. He may not have no education. He may not be the sharpest knife in the drawer. Uh, he may not make no money. See, it's trade-offs. It's trade-offs, ladies. And you get to decide what's most important to you, right? So what I've already long decided is that a man being 6'4 is not at the top of my priority list. That's called so what, okay? Him being 6'4, 6'2, 6 feet. <laughs> That's called so what? What I do need is, you know, hard working, good work ethic energy. I need good character energy. I need godly energy. I need an attractiveness that may not necessarily be physically apparent to everybody, but it's apparent to me. I need a man who's well-spoken and communicative. I need a man uh, who would be a good father, who has good father energy. Um... There's lots of things that I need, but it, like I said, years ago, I prioritized all the wrong things. And again, there's trade-offs. There's trade-offs. So just be mindful. A lot of y'all want money, but you're not getting character, okay? Or you want godly, and, and, and then you something else is lacking. 
but it's trade-offs to everything. So really sit down, figure out what your priorities are, and that's how you're gonna choose. And I'm not talking about in theory, because that's what that be him and y'all up to. You have this idea in your head in theory, and then you may actually get that guy and you're like, oh, I'm not attracted to him. I don't like this. I, okay, then you gotta be honest with yourself. A lot of y'all are not honest with yourselves. So for those of you that get wet over F boys, just know there's a whole lot of other stuff you're not gonna be getting, okay? If you need that, just like women now, it, it just blows my mind how masculine women have become. Now, women are pushing a narrative of, you know, sexual compatibility and I got to know and I got to know what he dealing with, what he packing and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, wow, I never thought I see the day where I hear women talk like this. Lord, y'all prioritizing all the wrong things, all the wrong things. And again, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you should not en enjoy yourself sexually with your husband. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you should not want to be you know, sexually please, but again, y'all got your priorities all messed up. All you care about is him knocking, knocking your box out and all this other stuff. Forget the fact that he ain't got no job. Forget the fact that he smoke weed all the time. <laughs> Forget the fact that he don't take care of his kids. Like the things that really matter, y'all don't care about that. So just understand there are trade-offs. There are trade-offs to everything. And you have got to know the difference. There are trade-offs. That's everybody. Okay, but ladies, we are not competing with men. I want you to just, look, put your hands up. This is what I do. Men come in the room, I just put my hands up. What you doing? I, you got it. <laughs> That's the signal. Okay, that's going to be the universal signal of you got it. Okay, you see a man. Look, I see a man out in the street. And he getting ready to get the door, I do this. Thank you. You need help with that? I sure do. That's going to be the universal signal that I will not compete with a man anymore. You got it. But ladies, you're going to have to do some ego work to get there. Because that's one of the ugly traits that y'all have picked up by becoming men. You've picked up their ego. You've picked up that egoist way. I can do it. I got my own money. I can buy this. I can do that. Look, baby, let a man come along and say, Anita, you know, do you really want this car? I mean, because I know you always wanted a Range Rover. Oh, what, what, what are you saying? Well, you know, I, I was thinking, you know, that'd make a wonderful wedding gift. It sure would. It sure would. And I sure would take it. So I'm not going to sit there. I... I can get my own car. What you talking about? I got a car. Let the man of my dreams that I'm engaged to want to buy me a Range Rover for, for a wedding present. Now, look, this is what I'm going to do. Okay? That's what some of y'all need to learn how to do. Put your hands up. Swallow that ego. Swallow that pride. Be done with it. Give yourself a break. Let other people give you a break. Stop trying to, what they call it, superwoman syndrome. Take that cape off, okay? Sit down and actually be a woman. One of the things that I always say on my platform is the hardest thing God intended for a woman to do was have a baby. And think about that. That's the only thing, that's one of the things men can't do. There ain't no biological man, last I checked, that has had no baby. That's the hardest thing you were created to do. And because you're out here trying to do everything else, some of you can't even do that. And that's a darn shame. That's a total, total shame to me. It should not be that way. It should not. So this is the wake up call that you know, we have got to do that ego work. We've got to be willing to lay that masculine stick down and say, nope, I'm not a man. I don't want to be a man. There's no pride. There's no ego. You know, there's humility in being passive, patient, and vulnerable. That is the three tenets of femininity. And I want you to start embracing it. Watch your life change when you do that. Watch the type of men that you uh, attract. Watch the type of men that come into your lives. Watch the things that come into your life. 
when you actually start being open and receptive to a good man and his leadership and him giving and doing. It is absolutely amazing. I experienced it as a single woman. So that's why I just can't wait. I can't wait. I, when I tell y'all, let my husband show up, y'all gonna be like, Anita spoil. <laughs> Anita spoil. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. Because I already get it from being a single woman. I allow men to do things for me. I allow them to give me things. I allow them to take me places. I sure do. I sure do because I am the girl. I am the girl. I want you to be too. All right, I'm heading in. I got a meeting at 1130. Have a fantastic day today. It's a rainy day, but like I said, I appreciate the rain right now because it's letting me know that spring is around the corner. Um, my hope is that this weekend I will start turning over the soil in my garden and um, I have to do things a little different this year because we have a new puppy and the puppy has already been in all of my you know, gardening areas, digging up and digging holes and it's just been a complete mess. So uh, I'm gonna have to do some container gardening this year. That's one thing I said I would, I would do differently is I'm gonna do some container gardening and I'm probably gonna plant flowers in the garden beds I have now. I'll just plant some flowers. Um, I won't plant any like vegetables or anything, but I will put my vegetables like in containers so the puppies do not dig it up or eat it or whatever it is they're doing. So I'm gonna do things a little bit differently. But this is your reminder that there is a masterclass this month. It is on the last day of the month, March 31st. That's a Sunday, 7.30 p.m. It's dark feminine versus light feminine energy. That's what we will be discussing, all right? I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. And as always, stay open to love.